I have a ton of discs, but let's face it, most of them are, well, they're just garbage and never get used. Well, we're going to change all that. We're building a total garbage bin. Hi, this is David Salee, and extensive research has gone into the development of this, well, garbage bag. Now, while it would be easy to just select a random mold that nobody likes and just have that fill the entire bag, instead, we went with some special rules. Had to have one putter. Had to have two mid-range. Two fairway and two distance drivers. They could be the same mold, but they couldn't be exact duplicates with their attributes. Here's what we wound up uh, putting together. For the putter, we have everyone's favorite heavy, sticky keystone, which, you know, when you think about it, there's not too many putters out there that are really horrible, so it's not that bad. With the mid-range, we're going with a pair of anchors. Now, that's an already overstable disc, and so let's uh, maximize that overstability by making one of them heavy and extra fade, and the other one extra fade and sticky. In keeping with the overstable theme, we're going with a pair of triple X's for our fairway drivers, making one of them light extra fade and the other one roll extra fade. Finally, we're topping it off with a pair of recoil distance drivers, matching the triple X with the light extra fade and the roll extra fade. It's a super overstable bag. It is not going to be a whole lot of fun. But we're going to head out to the course and see how we do. So after my somewhat surprising victory on the C tier tournament with the garbage bag, it's time to step up to a B-tier tournament. And I've selected the precipice, and that is not by accident. I think that this particular tournament, since it's crow's nest, both forward and backward, really ought to play into the strengths, if there is such a thing, of having so many overstable discs. The holes themselves are not particularly long, I mean, there are some eagle opportunities, but a lot of times you really need the fade on it. So I'm, I'm just crossing my fingers that this is going to be a good decision. And I also hope that uh, big square is the one that I'm the most nervous about, but hopefully I can figure something out when I get there. So let's uh, jump into the precipice with the garbage bag. Okay, Crow's Nest, let's see if selecting you has paid off. Very first hole, nice and short, going to make it through the arch. Oh boy, yep, we're going to go with the light extra fade triple X. We have a three helpful win, so I'm going to move it over and lower it a little bit. Maybe not 100%, just kind of let it slide. There we go. I think by keeping it low, it's going to keep that fade to a minimum. So we'll just throw this in. Nice, easy start. First two holes tend to be pretty routine. So this next one, yeah, even with the three win, I'm just going to go with the anchor. Uh, maybe the wind won't affect the heavy one as much. Should be able to throw a full power shot on this. Uh, still that, oh man, that's a lot of fade. Oh, just lean her against the rock. All right, well, 41 feet, throw it in. All right, so here we go. This is the next hole, and I am expecting the fade to come in handy. The recoil light extra fade should be just the right length for it. Got to remember to switch to backhand, and I should be able to even flex it just a tiny bit and make it around the side of the mountain. Oh, it's going right into it. Oh, nice skip. Stay on there. Stay on there. Don't go in the water. Oh, all right. Got pretty lucky. 42 feet. Throw it through. Oh, a little little pro side, but managed to stay in. Must have been that stickiness of it. 
All right, well, there's no way I'm going to go over the mountain, even with the three tailwind. So I'm going to slide over, use the light extra fade, and see just how far around the mountain we can get. Uh, I miss going over the top. Would have been really nice. Oh, good roll. Good, you know, good skip. Slide. What do we got? 130. Oh, all right. Well, let's uh, full send almost with the... No, <laughs> we'll just lay up. We are only playing for birdies. We'll get the eagle opportunities when we can, but no, we are being conservative. So this is the hole that i really dreading. Um, boy, yeah. Uh, I think that the recoil is going to be too overpowered, so could go triple X, but I... Uh, uh, it's going to fade way too much. So now let's go with the recoil and we're going to use the roll to try and hang close to the basket. So if I keep it low, throw it wide, hopefully this kind of grabs and sticks a little bit like the roll does. Oh, actually it's tracking nicely. <gasps> go in! Oh, are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Oh, so close. All right, 60 feet. Oh, let's not screw this up. Throw it in. There we go. All right. Oh, some drama, some excitement. That would have been great. Oh, all right, another opportunity to use that fade. So let's grab the old light fade recoil, slide it over, and make that hook work to our advantage. And hit the tree. Oh, of course. Couldn't get by it, could you? Oh, all right. Well, can we throw this in? Yeah. All right. We are starting to get the hang of that keystone. It goes nice and straight and not too bad. All right, so, okay, with the two headwind, it should work out. Switch to forehand, yeah, go with the light fade recoil. We're just gonna use kind of the same sort of aim that I typically use with my accurate glide musket. So just put that over there, give it a little flex, and come on now. Clear the rocks. Oh, no, don't, don't. Oh, there we go. All right, well, <laughs> uh, lots of excitement, but that worked out, and a 22-footer for Eagle. All right, so yeah, we are hanging in there. Uh, the cave, another one that's going to be handy with the fade, so still going with that light fade recoil. We'll put it out to the right and let it hook in. Yep, a little nervous there that it might have hit the side, but it's got a lot of fade, so... It's doing what I kind of was hoping it would. 16-footer, cash it in for the birdie. And yeah, we only have one hole left and we're throwing pretty clean here. So switch it to backhand. We'll use that light fade recoil. And yeah, just flex it out there. And even though it looks like it's going to send down the center, it's actually going to come in. Oh, good, good, good stop. 157, I... Oh. Man, if I had my fuse. But instead, we should use an anchor because we haven't used one there. And uh, yeah, let's give this a run. Let's pretend it's a fuse. Ah, uh, too much. All right, fine. At least it's going to just stay in the backstop area. 24 feet, piece of cake. There we go. First round done. Crow's nest, no problem. Minus 11, how are we stacking up against competition? We are tied, so we needed every single one of those strokes. Yeah, all right. Well, let's just get another minus 11 and see how we do. So same thing. Extra wind. Uh, we better hug the side of the mountain a little bit closer this time. Kind of hit and don't roll off. There we go. Okay, so parked uh, 181 this time. Use that same anchor. We have this dialed in now, so we're confidently going to throw this in or confidently throw it to the exact same spot because, hey, that worked out last time. So there we go. Another 29-footer. Just throw this in. We'll move on. Crystal Cave. Same sort of deal. So we know how to play this one. We're just going to use that light fade, line it up on the outside right of the cave, let it throw directly at it, watch it fade nicely, slide in. Yeah. Um, you know, as good as that's working out, that does not inspire me to replace any current disc with any of these discs. I just, I don't recommend it. But we're going to take as much advantage as we can. Oh, another two headwind. Okay, good, because that'll cut the distance down a little bit. So we should be able to line it up just exactly the same, flex it a little bit, 
This time, don't hit that rock. Don't hit the tree. Don't hit the tree. Thank you. Ooh, a little further. All right, well, we don't have the putt. We got a 71-footer. That's going to be a challenge, but we are, we're up for this. We'll just pull it back. All right, nice and centered. Good. Another eagle. And we are staying two ahead of our competition. That's good. Let's see if we can avoid hitting the tree. I'm going to take that same sort of line, though, using the extra fade light recoil and, mm, yeah, actually the roller this time. You know what? Let's see if we can roll along the side of the wall. Hey! It kicked out. Not bad, not bad. 38 feet. All right, yeah, let's go with the putt. There we go. That was a much easier birdie that time, so, hey, and everybody else got pars. Uh, let's let's ace run this again. So we're gonna use the same same one. I don't anticipate having any kind of luck like I did that last time. So we'll see. Same sort of line. Throw it out wide. Come on now. Turn, turn. Oh, actually, that struck it really nicely. Oh, good stop by the rock. All right. You know, 42 feet. Okay, we can make that with a putter. Throw it in. Wow. So I guess that is the play for that hole. Nice. Well, yep. Same thing. So we'll slide to the right, use that light fade, just get around the mountain as far as we can. It should kick out a little bit. Yep, it does. Excellent. Slide up, see what we have left. 139. Okay, I guess that's going to be an anchor because we have a little bit of the mountain in the way. So we use the heavy one. Lift it up a little bit. Uh, just kind of try and make it up to that top plateau, which we did and leave us a nice decent putt 18 footer we'll take our birdie and we only have a few holes to go this is looking really good all right now let's try not hitting the side of the wall this time let's get this a little further we have the wind so flex it just a tiny bit this should push it just fine get past there you go nice open area hey don't go crazy now don't uh, right behind the tree are you kidding me uh, actually, that's okay. Should be all right. Just throw this in. A little bit of a wind, and oh, <laughs> I whiffed it. Ah, uh, of course I did. Can't you know? This is why we can't have nice things. You know, uh, it is a garbage bag, so I shouldn't expect anything less than a few annoyances. But that's okay. All right. So we'll just finish off with the sticky anchor. We know that we can throw this full and. You know, even with that wind, it still it fights against it. Hey, don't go too far. Oh, stickiness saves from going OB. How handy. All right. Yeah, that was uh, way more dramatic than I needed it to be. But uh, we're looking good. We have quite a few strokes on the next competitor. So we'll just finish off with the good old triple X. We'll try the roll this time just for the heck of it and do a full send. See what it does. See if it grabs a hold. Yeah, it did. Okay, so that worked out just fine. 39 feet. Piece of cake. Throw it in. Call it good. Oh, uh, that means that we finished with 21. That's pretty sweet. You know, for a garbage bag, that is a real decent score. Yeah, and we're three strokes ahead of the second place individual. So the good news is that that was a wise choice, picking the precipice and taking advantage of all of the fade opportunities on that course. That's the good news. The bad news is that is a first place finish on a B tier, which means now I'm going to have to try and do something on an A tier. And I'll be honest, I really don't feel like I have any shot because there's no advantage that I can think of and it's going to ex you know, really expose the garbageness of the bag, but eh, it's all I can do. Just give it a go. So keep an eye out for another episode in which I struggle around an A-tier tournament. But I at least have this B-tier victory under my belt. So thanks for watching, and I will catch you later.